everybody, welcome! My name is Ursa Ryan and today, well today we're going to be taking on something rather tricky. A wonderful modder called Roman Holiday has come up with this, an AI rework. Now I've been a huge fan of real strategy which does a very similar thing, but this AI rework, well it promises some big things. Reworked AI tech progression, military strategy, late game, I'm going to call it strategies but involve nukes, and planes. And actually looking around at other content creators and on the Steam store generally, this AI rework, well, it may be pretty good. There's only one problem I've noticed so far. Supposedly, it's pretty difficult. Think about it, if the AI plays better, then it's going to be more difficult, right? I well, you'd think. Now this is my first run with the game. With the mod loaded, I'm really intrigued to see how it plays out. As usual, I'm going to put this save file in Discord, as well as a link to the mod itself. I'm going to try and put them in the description of the video just so you can go along to them. And again, thank you to Roman Holiday for bringing this mod to my attention. It does look really cool. In order to test it out properly, I'm playing with no game modes and no mods that change the game in whatever way. So this is just deity standard speed regular Civ. We're playing on a small tilted Axis map with Gaul, who I'll be honest with you, I'm not very good with. They're really good, but I'm not very good with them. They're very defensive though. Extra combat strength and oppidum with ranged attack. If, for instance, this game were to get a little bit fruity towards the end, I thought it would be fun to play somebody who can turtle a little bit, and honestly, I didn't fancy a game of Vietnam. Although now I'm thinking about it, maybe I should play a game of Vietnam sometime. Oh, who knows? I'm also looking at this start and thinking, wow, this is a average start. Like, no fresh water whatsoever weather and supposedly just a single luxury but it is a quarry. Ladies and gentlemen, to test a mod you need to play a game that's very distinctly average and this one looks very distinctly average so buckle up, strap yourselves in, pour yourself a drink, sneak that second Kit Kat that your other half or spouse totally didn't see you stealing from the cupboard, they can't tell it's on your waist, no one can tell. Don't worry, eat it, the chocolatey centre, yum 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 yum, it's all yours. Let's get started. And now, for an important update. Having been expelled from Oxford University, Ursa Bear had met a man named Paul. Oh dear. Luckily for Ursa Bear, he had amassed 40,000 subscriptions. These beautiful little signatures attracted the attention of none other than Gilgabro. Scared off by the majesty, Paul retreated and left Ursa Bear to his way. Searching for new subscriptions, Ursa Bear travelled to the coast, where lo and behold, it looked like more people. More people for subscriptions. Alas, it was not to be. Ursa Bear, our sweet innocent bear is now trapped, harassed by giant crabs. Will you save Ursa Bear from crabs? Will you help Ursa towards his goal? Thank you so much. Back to the video. Turn one and we have no fresh water, which is a problem. Gaul is all about mines, Gaul is all about quarries, and Gaul is all about production and culture. None of those things are food. And looking at this star, I have not a single two food tile apart from this copper, maybe these fish, some wheat down there, but the no housing is a problem. So I think I'm going to take my unique warrior, we'll talk about them in a little bit, and I'm going to head slightly further south and see if we can't find some fresh water. Is it a sensible decision moving myself away from the coast like this? Well, it's a tilted axis map. If you've never played on these before, a tilted axis map has a polar ice cap in the middle of it and then ice on the corners, as if you were looking at the world directly from top down. And it is not a rolling map. This is not a cylinder. This is a true flat earth. So to be honest, moving into the center of the map isn't necessarily a bad thing. So I'm just going to push down a little bit and already I can see not one, but two sources of fresh water. Okay, also some stone. Why is this important? Well, the Oppidum District, my replacement industrial zone. This has an adjacency bonus from quarries and strategics. Quarries, hmm, well, already there's one quarry and here is another. They're a little bit far away from each other, but we can utilize other things that Gaul's got going on. Namely, districts cannot be built adjacent to the city center. This means that aqueduct placement is very, very important. This really is an underwhelming start. I'm actually quite pleased we've seen it. Now, looks like there is a little bit of fresh water. This is unfortunately a grassland hill. That's a bit naff. And again, there are no real tiles around it. I could work the quarry and then with an aqueduct, we could start getting some decent oppidum placements. But I think this is probably my better bet at the moment. I could settle on top of the plains hill to give myself a 2-2. The sheep will be lost. But at the moment, that's kind of my only strategy. 
don't want to settle on the stone. And there is something there, which I'm suspecting is a city-state. Let's have a look in this wood and see what we find. Desert. Oh yeah, this is a terrible start. But you know what we say on Ursa Ryan's channel? Don't restart. Don't do it. Never. Never do it. That is a culture city-state. There's literally nothing here for me to work that's any good. So I think I'm just going to gamble and settle on my sheep. Oh, the problem with that strategy is... And this is the true problem. There's no real mines around. Not much flat land at all. This is a very flat start. If I settle there, at least I've got a couple of mines that I can pop down. But I've kind of got a bit of everything I don't want. I don't want to put a uh, mine on a plains hill because it'll have no food. And I want to be working the culture ideally. Yeah, hmm. Trust your gut, Ursa. Trust your gut. Stick to the coast or settle on top of a sheep. At least I'll get an extra production and then I can work that wood. Oh, I'm going to regret this. A duo tuka. It has no food. But, oh, there's some wine. There is banana. And already I can see if I were to plop down an aqueduct on this tile, I could go oppidum for plus two. Hang on. Does the oppidum not get any bonuses from green districts? Oh, it doesn't even get that. Oh, this is why I'm really bad with Gaul. They're just so fiddly. <laughs> just so fiddly. All right, we'll, we'll worry about that in a little bit. We'll unlock mining as soon as we can. Normally, I would go for a scout start, but I would actually like to generate some culture to rush through Code of Laws as quickly as I can. Luckily for me, if I train a non-civilian unit, I get 20% of its cost back in culture. That's 12 culture on a warrior, which is 10 turns or five turns worth if I build a scout. I'm going to go for another unique unit. They're quite expensive, but they're really good. Culture City State. I meet them first. Excellent. This is gain culture equal to 10% of the construction cost when finishing buildings. Why me? Between that and my units, is there anything in the game that I don't get culture from building? Well, yes, civilian units. But we can ignore those. It's fine. Oh, yes, and that's great. The extra culture from the City State is working this wine tile really quickly. Oh, I knew settling here was good. I just feel your gut. It's like the heart of the cards from Yu-Gi-Oh. Ignore all logic. Just pull randomly from a deck and then just claim that it was the right thing to do. Ooh, that's another city-state. Lahore. I can now train Niang units. Now that requires a bit of faith, but they're very powerful, those units, especially if I get a single encampment down. I think I'm going to have to get pretty aggressive with this mod. That's my gut feeling. If you haven't seen this mod, by the way, basically what Roman Holiday has done is reprioritized all of the different aspects of what the AI favors. Roman has made it to certain civs favor different conditions, and if they are going for a win condition, they focus on it much more. AI is also supposedly much better at using military units, just in terms of reprioritizing city attacks, making sure they use planes better, using navy better, like everything just seems to have a little bit of extra. I do not mind that at all. I do I mind this though. Where have you come Come from Mr. Barb. But the main reason I've chosen to play without game mods this time, or game modes like Barbarian Encampments or Secret Societies or whatever, is I wanted to just test to see how the mod actually plays out. God King, Discipline. Right. The scout definitely went in that direction. I don't like that. That's a bad direction to be going in. So let's get the builder going as quick as we can. We're well, saying that there are no mines around here at all. Nothing that I'll be able to work. Oh, this was just the worst capital for Gaul. It really was. Okay, I'm still going for mining because we'll go bronze working. Find the iron. Then we can have a look at oppidums. Make sure we get that down as quickly as we can. Go for a bit of a man at arms rush. This is what I'm planning on doing, really. If my start's rubbish, I can always conquer city states. And a really good way of doing that is to man at arms rush. So when you unlock your oppidum for the first time and build it, you get the apprenticeship technology immediately. And after that, you can just insta build man at arms, providing we have iron. One of the ways to do that is to go kill some barbs. So that's what we're doing. All right, I'm going to put another turn into another unique unit. It's expensive, but I think I quite like that as a strategy. Strategy. You know what, instead of bronze working, I'm going to unlock animal husbandry first. I'm feeling lonely. These autumn nights. I need a spouse and a horse will do. But it'll also give me more educated guess as to where the oppidum should go and that will help massively. Oh, there's a barb encampment down here as well. I think I'm just going to farm barb encampments. That's what we're going to do today. Get some era score. Oh, Ayutthara is definitely trying to kill that scout. Let's get the first kill. Yep, there we go. There's the encampment. I reckon we can farm a lot of barb experience here. And there's a tribal village. Oh, I say that. We're not going to get to it in time because the city-state is actually destroying it. But... 
This is where my plus five from Barbarians comes in, and also the plus two combat strength from King of the Eubrons. This is a wonderful thing. All of my melee, anti-cavalry, and ranged units receive two combat strength for every adjacent unit. That includes the one they're fighting. People always forget that, so pretty much I always have plus two. I'm gonna just fortify down and hopefully they'll attack me on the hill. Should be fine. Oh, and this is where the other benefit of my warrior goes in. These things get plus five combat against districts and plus 10 against any unit with a higher base strength. So I'm getting a beautiful chunk of plus five, plus two, plus 10 and plus five. Oh yeah, Let's clear this encampment quick. A horseman attacked someone else. Okay, that seems to be going my way for now. Barbarian encampment was destroyed. Barbarian suicided itself. That's unfortunate. Okay, well, I didn't get the experience or the era score for that one, but I will from this one. Military tradition boosted. There's a scout there. Maybe we'll get a kill. I don't know. Who knows, really? Let's switch to foreign trade quickly. Well, the scout's going to just solo itself into me. Sure, now I have a battle cry. You do that. Go and see what's directly south of me. I mean, this is, it just looks like all desert. I don't like that at all. Do you remember I've been saying in a lot of series recently? Oh, there's bronze working boost. Yep, it literally did sacrifice itself on me. Love it. I've been saying recently that I've been enjoying not settling really quickly and just building a city, building a capital for maybe 50, 60 turns and just making sure I've got a really good base before I spread. This is the start that disproves that as a good idea. If, you, if you've got this start, oh my goodness, settle somewhere else. <laughs> Go and grab whatever else. Oh, I look at the appeal tile. Yep, that's a natural wonder. That looks like the Dead Sea to me. Interesting. The Dead Sea. Okay, this means there's probably a lot of desert around here. And also no fresh water. Oh, this could be an epic Petra city. And Imhotep is up first. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you why that's exciting. I can get oppidums so much quicker than everybody else. And they generate engineering points. And oh... Basically, Gaul is guaranteed to get Imhotep if you play him right, especially if he comes up first. So, I've got to think about this. We want to make sure I go Celestial Navigation. I want to unlock my Oppidum as quick as I can. Bronze working is there as well for me to go and grab. Pingala will get me my science because we're going to be neglecting campuses. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're just going to settle out and just maybe hope that we've got a decent luxury spawn. Prey. Prey is another good way of putting this. Animal husbandry is done, and there are the sources of horses. Told you. Sometimes it's just waiting. It's waiting before you make your plans to get your good oppidums. Look at that. Plus six. Two, two, and two. Where are the other horses? Do any exist? There are some. Okay, right. So we've got two sources. That's not too bad. Looking at this though. Ah, not many mines, but actually, oh, I tell you what I'm going to do. I will settle on this tile. Then I can put a mine down on that tile, which will culture bomb this tile and this tile. Then I can put the quarry down. And after that's done, I'll put an oppidum down on the tile that the mine was on. Seems inefficient, but I think that works for me. I'm also tempted to settle in this direction as well. This is too close to my capital. I really didn't want to settle too close to my capital. I want to settle as close to the city state as I can. So we'll go there, work the quarry, pop down a ploppadum, a technical wording for that one. And I can actually then double up with a government plaza, potentially. Like there, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. This is a this is a plan that'll it'll work itself out. Let's not get too attached to it too quickly. Bronze working time. Looks like this desert is pretty comprehensive. I want to work as many of these desert hills as I can. I'm going to settle that. And then this Petra city will just be like bloop on everything. Does the Dead Sea count as desert? No, it counts as coast. That's a shame. That would be funny if it did. Okay, the, the Petra city is not a good idea. Nan the doll. I have another first meet. This is three first meets. I think I've got this entire land to myself. I like this. That's a good thing. Yay for old Ursa. Another horse. Mexico City. Oh, they have been met. And oh, someone has a governor in this city state. Interesting. Okay, so we don't we don't have the space to ourselves. We probably should have suspected that. Which city do I settle first? That's the question. I think the one on the coast has no fresh water, but there are horses that I can work almost immediately, which would be pretty useful for me. Just keeping an eye out for other sources of stone, other sources of horses. There is a double stone here, for instance. Like, let's not forget about this sort of placement. Anything that's plus four or above, that's when I get a little bit excited. Anything up until that point, I'm not going to bother just polluting the map with hundreds of tacks, maybe. We'll see how excitable we get. Still working on God King. A gogi's use? Yeah, I'm going to pop a gogi in. Oh no, I'm not ready to build units yet. We'll keep discipline in. I will pop a gogi in to build more troops in a little bit. Craftsmanship. 
Done. State workforce. Let's rush this out now. Here is the settler. And as mentioned, yeah, I'm going to head over to the coast and settle in that direction. Does it make sense to rush another builder? Ugh, none of these tiles are very good and I can't upgrade any of them. I guess I could put wheat down and get some actual food in this city. That may not be a bad idea, you know. Or I could send a builder over to the new city. Let's go build up. Okay, then I'll send a builder over to the new city and then it means I don't have to buy them. Japan, Tokugawa. Oh no, we know how powerful Tokugawa is. Oh, they've got gypsum as well. Okay, fine. Honored to meet you. Love to sample your hospitality. They're right there. Oh, interesting. Have we met our first target? Why do you like me minus 17? Hang on there. Okay, I don't think we're going to have a friend in Tokugawa. <laughs> He's no Woody from Toy Story. He is not a friend in me. He's more of the evil bloke who steals Woody and then paints on his foot. Hang on, we're, mi we're mixing up movies here, aren't we? That's, that, is that Toy Story 2 is the one where he gets his foot painted on? I think it is. Because there's that whole, there's that whole thing in the airport, right? There's a whole chase sequence in an airport. Oh, man. These are the sort of childhood movies I miss. One other thing I'm going to be working on, great generals. If I'm going to man at arms rush with Gaul, which I'm always inclined to do, I want to make sure I get one of the first great generals. So getting an encampment down is really handy, especially because it rushes state workforce. All of these, ladies and gentlemen, are wonderful things. Mount Vesuvius. Oh, that's a bit of a blurst wonder to start next to Japan. I guess it's kind of their Fuji replica, right? So it kind of makes sense. City number two. Huzzah! Samaro Briva. Love it. Love its style. We've got the builder. Let's go and work that mine and start to just like, we go mine, horse, gypsum like that in, in like a sort of triple. There is no housing in this city at all, but that is fine. We'll start building my units and we'll get a gogi in as quick as we can. Does it make sense for me to build this city now? I mean, there is amber in that direction. That is tempting to go and move a city down in that direction in order to just get a little bit of extra happiness. Yeah. All right. Let's get expansive. Let's get exciting. Oh, Tokugawa's got an army already. Look at all this. I have decided that instead of keeping my starting units near me, I'm just exploring like mad. Whether that's a good idea or not, I'm, you know, I could be convinced either way on that one. Here's iron. Go on. Oh, oh yes. Okay, right. Well, that is an Oppidum placement gone, but at least we have iron underneath a mine I was literally just about to put down. Considering I get so unlucky on strategics, I will take that. However, only two sources. There is one over there. We are going to be severely iron limited. Mmm... That doesn't spell like exciting, super useful man at arms rush, does it? Uh, better get that down as quickly as we can. Bam! So we've got wheel working, we've got iron working boosted, and we've culture bombed both of these tiles now. Oh, and mines have plus one culture. So that's worth a science and a culture, that iron mine. Huzzah! Okay, well, do we just fill in the blanks a little bit? Maybe go for a granary in my second city? Maybe unlock other things? No, we're going to beeline ironworking. I think it's worth it. And I'm going to get the encampment down pretty much immediately as well. The settler is useful, but it takes about the same amount of time to build the encampment as it does. Mm. Oh, there are some difficult choices here already, aren't there? We want to get at least one opera done, but I think Gaul itself, my capital, will grow. Got enough food. It will grow to the sort of requisite amount of space. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this settler, then I'll build an encampment. I think it makes sense to do it this way around. I've still got my warriors around. They're not really useful for me at the moment. I'm going to build an encampment on this tile and pop it there, which means I can actually start to attack that city-state from my encampment, should I choose to. And here is a pantheon. Options I'm looking at at the moment. One production and one faith from strategics. That sounds really, really useful. I could get reeds and marshes for maybe one oasis, but that's kind of it on that front. Sacred path for rainforest adjacency. If I was going to go for a bit of a holy site rush, like I've got some decent rings of rainforest. I could go for like a plus four if I wanted to work ethic it, but I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. Culture on pastures or plantations would be good options. I could go for faith on quarries, but I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that one, I have to say. Let's go for God of Craftsmen. One production, one faith. Which means I'll have a little bit of extra faith to use going forward. And as you can see, we've now got a beautiful 1-1-4-1-1 tile. Bit of an all-purpose, brilliant warrior tile for us. That. Let's improve this pasture now. Oh yeah, it's really good. Do I work the horse in order to just actually grow the city out of it? I don't know. Don't know yet. We'll, we'll work on that. Gypsum makes both of my cities happy and gives me the masonry boost. 
which is wonderful. That's a boost that I indeed wanted. Build a specialty district. Is it worth rushing that through for the governor, getting Pingala down as quickly as possible, or do I now switch to foreign trade? It could be argued in either direction. I don't think we're going to get a golden age this age, are we? But <laughs> it's not necessarily too bad a thing. Vicky of England. Oh no, we're gonna have at least one naval combatant. I will have a look at your capital down there. What found me? Oh, a scout. Oh, good. Oh, not good. Oh, you just took a tribal hut I was going for. Mean. Okay, that's not great. Just purely because I was uh, looking forward to that tribal village for my own nefarious ends. But fine. At least there isn't a galley just sort of lurking around. That would be slightly worse. Let's buy the luxury from England. Just future proofs me a little bit against unhappiness. Seems ridiculous as well, but I'm going to spend all of my gold really, really quickly. Avoiding tiles next to hills, but we're going to go one and then two. Just so I've got another three food tile that I can be working to try and grow a little bit faster here. Food is a problem. Food very much is a problem. How is the AI settling with this mod at the moment? Turn 43, four cities, three cities. Okay, good, good. I was worried that this mod would be just so broken that they'd have about 17 cities from like turn one, but no, I think we're okay for now. Who's to say that won't happen later, but currently, currently we're okay. State workforce means I could go for Pingala or Armani. Who's better here? I think Armani. Let's send you to Nandol quickly. We'll head out and get some era score for the next age. You know what? There are some turtles around this iron. Luxuries. It's all about just making sure we beeline as many of these luxuries as we can. Settler, spawns, yay, off you pop. I'm gonna save myself for the oppidum. I'd rather put that down before the encampment. Let's get a builder going. We'll unlock plantations and pottery as soon as we can afterwards. No, 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 no. Oh, if you steal this amber, I'm going to be so annoyed at you, Japan. Don't you dare. Hopefully I'm gonna just oh, interrupt their autopiloting. Just by moving my worry around, I might be able to convince them to back off. Sometimes you can do this with the AI, although again, changed AI mod. We don't know if this is gonna work. Time for urban planning as well. We've got discipline, we've got urban planning. It's all looking pretty good. Oh, I can't believe they're gonna go and settle that. It is just the most annoying thing. Watch, watch as they settle now on the floodplain. No, they've gone onto the hill. They've gone onto the hill. That's exactly where I was gonna settle. No, 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 no. Please don't, please don't, please don't. Oh, that's so annoying if they do that. Oh, I should have waited on that barb camp until next era. Oh, Ursa's making mistakes now. No, oh, all right. You've moved beyond. Okay. What if I just lurk around you now? What if I just be incredibly menacing? <laughs> I just, I'm gonna menace everywhere. Oh, this is such a forward saddle. Look at where they're going. Are, are they just off to the Dead Sea? I don't know where they're off to, but it's actually quite amazing. Right, instead of on that hill, I'm actually going to just make use of the fact that I could, in theory, settle one further back just for loyalty purposes. I'm gonna settle on top of the maze there. Okay, I don't trust whatever you're doing, Japan, but luckily, my units are, are really powerful against spearmen. There's a chance I could steal the settler on a quick surprise war, you know? Normal age, no one else has hit a golden age. Normal is looking good. What are we gonna go for? Monumentality to celebrate my districts going down would be good, but I'm gonna go free inquiry because Eureka's from era score and also, or sorry, the other way around, era score from Eureka's and also constructing buildings from campuses. That's way easier than anything else. I don't know if I'm going for a religion just yet. We'll see, nobody's going for general points. Looks like a lot of people are going for scientists. So nothing's really changed on that front for now. This city, you just build yourself a barracks quickly. I'm going to make that into a quiet encampment hub. And then the oppidum, I can afford the gold for that next turn. And then this city, you build yourself a unique unit. Yeah, let's do it. And I will go pottery. Give me food. Give me happiness. So England like the fact that I share a continent with them. That's good. <gasps> oh my lord, they've done it. They've done it. The fools, they have left themselves officially in a position where I can get two attacks on them. Oh, all right, let's calculate this really quickly. Japan has a scout. Japan also has a city state. Both of these are right next to me. It would be insta war. And I mean, that scout could go and pillage everything. These warriors could pillage everything. I have Namadol, but that's not very helpful for me right now. What are they going to do? They likely 
are going to go and settle in this direction. They're not going to be within close proximity to their capital, so it won't stay loyal. And my loyalty will hit, I think it's like nine tiles around. So I will put loyalty pressure on them. So I will win that city back eventually. I don't even know if I'm going to have enough strength to actually take them out. That's the problem as well. England is at war with Japan though. Can I just join in with your war? I have to give her horses. Well, no, I'm not going to do that. Oh, sod it. Sometimes you have to declare war. This is going to go so terribly wrong, but when you have an opportunity like this, you have to take it. Both of my units can get into close proximity. I'm going to move them like this because now they have plus four combat strength because they get it from adjacency with themselves. So I'll go one and then two like that, steal the settler, and then we'll panic. Oh goodness, I'm just going to, I'm going to regret this so quickly. Oppidum, you build that there. Switch from barracks. Oh, no, um, there's no point getting a warrior there, is there? I'm going to move from Nan Nadol to Lahore. Just acts as a buffer state between me and Japan. And I'll go for Pingala in my capital, as discussed before. And then these warriors are just going to have to peel back as quickly as possible and come and help me. Oh, I'm going to regret this. I'm going to regret this so much, but I have to do it. You know I have to do it. Okay, the scout's going to move around. The city-state units are just moving in random directions. So far, no instant problem. This is too early for a Petra city. I think this is the better city because it just acts as another wall to my capital. So it will move the settler up with my units. I'd rather protect my capital in this particular instance. Yeah, for now, this is okay. Go on, Vicky, you want to be friends? We're at war with the same person. I'm on the same continent as you. I am English. Can you not hear it in the tea obsession in my voice? Actually, once we've got pottery, I'm going to just beeline into masonry quickly. That'll help. I could sell some horses to England for some straight up gold. That's not a bad idea, you know. Let's do that. And oh, the iron I want to hold on to. Okay, the city-state troops so far are being, well, I would say indecisive would be a good word. And we don't mind that. So let's just quickly improve this farm. Irrigation boosted. A little bit more food in the capital. Uppadum was no accident. Now it is a defensible district. And luckily for me, plus six production. Oh, yes. We've now unlocked apprenticeship, which means my mines have plus one production as well. So this iron mine is doing me even more things. Why are you not working this tile? That's so much of a better tile than this. Yes, I know it's got no feed, but you've got no housing. You shouldn't be working that. Sometimes you have to actually manually take control of this sort of stuff and go, AI, what you doing? So that settler will go in nicely. You're going to move you to that, move you to that, move this builder to this tile, and I'll go to this mine, and I'll culture bomb that and go boom, and have loads and loads of stuff in the city. Now, most importantly, how much gold for an upgrade? Oh, oh, no. That was stupid. I left a unique unit in my cam and in that third city and it's flipped over to building a man at arms and it's absorbed some of my iron. Ah, that's silly. I don't want to be working that. That's going to take far too long. Got to build a gang. That was a mistake. That is a genuine mistake and a, and a silly mistake at that. I'm going to end up doing the same thing in my capital as well. 160 production. It's going to take so long for that man at arms, but fine. That, that I can afford. I'll get at least one going. Because I won't need many man at arms to take over this city state. And you know what? I think I will take over this city state. Culture city states for me, not a huge priority. And that is a decent enough city with two sources of no, actually three stone in it. Yeah, sell that. It's mine. Novo Dunham. Yes, of course. I'm gonna put the upper dumb on this tile rather than this one. And look at this. Boop. All three tiles are mine. Oh yes. Oh, I love it when the yield just really correctly loads in as well. Isn't it wonderful? Now I'm going to move you to that and you to that because now the units are next to each other. So we will get the good old sink of my King of the Ubrons. And oh, it doesn't quite kill the scout. Oh, I, bet, I bet they pillage the farm. It's not the worst scenario if they do, but I bet they do. Barracks is complete. No one's getting any general points at the moment. This is a good sign try and pump out some units and you really do like me England there we go I thought we'd have a friend in England classical era we're going to go for the old combat oligarchy yes discipline is okay but gogi is better actually we can have both we can have both everyone yay well that's fine then let's go for Ilkem because I am building a couple of builders and I am slowly building an army of reinforcements to take over in this direction. Actually, I'm just going to chop down this rainforest quickly. I'll just speed that along, mean I'm working another decent tile in that city. Tell you what, Gaul's production always makes me laugh just how powerful it is. Feudalism, I think, is the next important stop, but we'll get military tradition just so I have flanking bonuses. And this is one of my scouting warriors, just lurking around the back of Japan's territory. Is there anything for me to pillage? I shall pillage. Pillage. 
You know that I enjoy a spot of pillage. I am a cultured man after all, yes. Which is a really, really good way of leveling some troops up. Just attacking the city-state. Now, can you please, for me, build a battering ram? Thank you. 210 gold with the iron for an upgrade as well. That's not too bad, you know? I'm tempted to levy Lahore. No one else has any influence over them, and there's four warriors here that I can use to attack the city-state from the other direction. Oh yeah, my unique unit is so good at fighting chariots. Yep, let's just fortify. Give ourselves the highest chance of surviving this little onslaught. Yeah, yeah, you're both standing next to me. Um, okay, well this is probably going to be quite short-lived. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it was worth a try. There's no point trying to run. I can't, I can't escape. I'm, I'm a slower moving unit. Bye-bye, sweet friend. Bye-bye. Yeah, those heavy chariots are pretty brutal. My first man at arms. Yay! That's a powerful unit and a half. Miss Oppidum is finished as well. I'm going to call it a Ploppidum because I've just plopped it down and it's wonderful. Oh, Jabba would be so good in this scenario. You know what? Rushing Imitab, legit, is not a bad idea. <laughs> it's really not a bad idea at all. I'm tempted. I love the culture from the mines, but I love the culture bomb even more. There's something so satisfying about it. Peace. N no. No, 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 no. I'm enjoying this war too much. Oh, you want to attack me, do you? Y you want to you wanna go? Ha <laughs> ha Try me now. Oh yeah, these are monster units. And I've got a battering ram right here nearby as well. We're building the wall so I can start raining death upon the units from that direction. Oh yeah, uh, this, this is going to be lovely. I'm building up quite the attack and my catapult is not far off as well because we've got the ancient walls spawning in a couple of cities just to make it even better than it is at the moment. The only thing I need is a bit of gold, which England will give me. I don't think they've got any gold per turn, have they? Nope, they are bankrupting themselves, but hey, as long as I've got a small glut of gold, I'll be happy. Oh, you're fronting up to me, are you? Interesting play. I think I have something to say about that. We'll go one attack, kill the unit in one, of course, and then go two like that. I just need to give myself the battle cry where I can. Okay, so far, so good. This attack appears to be pretty uninterrupted. Yep, that's brutal. <laughs> That is terrifyingly brutal. Here is a mine with some amber on it. Yay! Oh, double culture from that tile. Lovely. Okay, okay. The city-state units are just kind of catapulting themselves on me. That's fine. We'll bring the battering ram in. I'll move my mana arms in to get another kill. And I'll treat myself to a quick level up. Hmm. I like going down the commando route. The extra movement is always really fun. Oh, hello. Oh, you're going to levy the city-state units, are you? That, to me, feels like a bit of a misplay, but I'll take it. Let's, oh, just decimate the walls. <laughs> oh, they're gone. They're already gone. Wow. All right, that, that, was, that was fairly effective. I enjoyed that. Lahore is just charging their units in on Japan like an absolute maniac, and I, I'm, all, I'm all there for it, but seems a bit fraught to failure, put it that way. My capital is focusing on infrastructure, water mill, granary, barracks, workshop. I've got enough army right now, so the economy is much more important. Oh, my city attacks are terrible. I need to get at least one ranged unit at some point. There's the commando. That's a level two unit. Oh, we need to name some units. I like to name the units after the channel supporters. Haven't done it in a little while. Welcome, Flair. You. You need to lead this charge. And by lead, I mean stand and look pretty while somebody else does it. Yes. You said five population, lots of stone, a monument, a granary. These are all very important buildings. Oh, I like it. Yeah, we're just saving up now for another source of iron. If we can get 10 more, we can get another man at arms upgrade and start sending the army south. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!